Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of your last best hope for conversation, your Babylon 5 podcast. I am Jesse Jackson. Joining me in CNC is Lou. Morning, everyone. And the podcast mom, Karen. Hello. So, hey, we are back. We're still on the first season of Babylon 5 as we do every episode in order. And we have reached season one, episode, episode six, Mind War, with a very significant guest star. Mm -hmm. So, ladies first, Karen, what was your thoughts? I think it's weird to see Walter Koenig, Koenig, sorry, in, in such a weird role. You're used to seeing him as that sweet good guy and he is a lot more gray <laughs> in this role i also like that we got to see hmm, what's her name back catherine yeah catherine, catherine. yes that we got to see catherine back and she had car yeah exactly so it, it was disconcerting but i like the uh, overall arc good lou how about you yeah i uh, echo a lot of what karen said walter Koenig all in black is an interesting sight and he looked very much of the movie era movie truck era with mm -hmm. he still had the pointed sideburns and everything and i just uh, kept on waiting for him to say but where are the nuclear vessels but right you know but the the storyline was in interesting there's a lot of implications in this episode about telepaths and their role in earth society and so forth so that was interesting as well this again this episode had echoes of star trek episodes it reminded me a lot of the changeling and star trek the motion picture at the end mm -hmm. and overall it, the acting again was pretty good there was a moment or two where sinclair flubbed it and koenig's assistant and i don't remember her name she was almost like she might as well be the snidely whiplash twirling her mustache she was very mm -hmm. pushing it very over the top with her evil evilness so and the b storyline was interesting as karen mentioned uh, with jakar as well so and uh, his makeup continued to impress me this episode so i assume mm -hmm. that this is the way it's going to be going forward so, yeah it was a, a strong episode a lot of implications and i'm sure that there was a lot of seeds planted in here that i probably haven't caught yet oh and the other star trek episode that reminded me was far point with the the jellyfish mm -hmm. so that creature that they showed at the right. planet was interesting as well so, yeah a, a pretty interesting episode overall you know, it makes me wonder if villain in to make Walter look a little less villain that we don't rebel so much. I think it was just more pedantic than that. I think they wanted to kill off one of the Psychors and mm. they couldn't kill him off. So they had to have basically their version of a red shirt. Right. Yeah. That's an interesting theory, though, Karen. I like that. This is one of the episodes where if you are... Uh, and I tend to be a, a purist, so I watch all the episodes during a rewatch. But this is one of the episodes that if you are picking, this is one of the first season episodes that you do watch. One, for setup, and two, just because it is really interesting to watch Walter Cohen play such a good part. And JMS talks about that he was really glad to give him a more meaty role than a lot of times. And I think you could make the same argument for almost any of the supporting cast on Star Trek that at times, if you get outside the big three, they did not have a lot to do some episodes to show him being able to do, and, and I thought you said it very well, Karen, very gray character. And, and also, I think his performance was almost as if to tie the Dakar thing that the regular people are like ants to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just looks at like, well, a mundane, you know, I just, you know, I, I just, it is something I shouldn't worry about. Almost kind of the shades of in the Harry Potter world, right? Where the muggle, moguls, muggles are beneath a lot of people in the magic world, so even concern. Why should I even care about them? So yeah, really well done. So let's go straight to the meat. The Psycops show up. They are, I think, very impressive in black, very military uniform. Cohen does look very, because we've seen him over the years, he looks very vibrant. And I don't know if you noticed, but his he never moves his left hand. His left hand, he decided to play as if there was a physical injury. Mm. And so that 
Bester has an injury, which he doesn't care about because he doesn't care about the physical world. So we talked a little bit, but let's go through that storyline. So Jason ends up, he is a telepath. They end up giving him some kind of serum or they do some kind of things to get him. They want to make him more powerful because telekinesis is something they're shooting for. And uh, I thought the actor, William Allen Young, was really good in this role and talking about how silent assassin. Let's start with you this time. Sorry, I muted myself. So I I have to admit that the opening scene was confusing and I I put it down to the, the level of special effects of the time period because I didn't really get that his ship destroyed those other ships. I thought he had a jump drive or something and jumped away. So but reading these episode summary here, it says that they destroyed those ships. I'm saying, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't get that. But yeah, it was, it was an interesting opening. And I, I do like that they've introduced this whole area of, of the Babylon 5 universe to us in this episode. Because we, as in previous episodes, we're mentioning that we had a lot of questions about the, what are the rules around telepaths and so forth. So this was... Raising or answering a lot of questions and like a, a good story, raising a lot of new questions. So it, it, this, because like if we take it from telepath that's on board uh, Babylon 5, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name. Off Talia. Uh, who? Talia. Talia. She was playing by the set of rules that I, I, at her level they live by, but the other operatives all basically like the KGB or the whatever they're or they're like double o agents who are like they got a license yeah. to kill so it was an interesting setup to the episode karen yeah i totally agree with lou about that compare it to the rest of the episode it was very but once you got into the episode i thought that was a very they had done some sort of mk ultra thing and it sounds like they did it on more than just him. so that'll be stuff with that i also love that he gave talia that gift and is that going to be a gift or bites her in the butt later on yeah is Um, it a gift or a curse right so i love that they planted little pieces i did i i know he's been in a lot of like sitcoms as a sitcom dad and stuff and i also liked that ivanova gave some sass in this episode because of her life damaged so much by the tied a bunch of stuff together and like Lou said it gave us more to think about that that's coming down the line so very cool yeah he has been he's played in this is us he played a councilman he's been a doctor on code black mm. right he was jerry camden in uh, anatomy of a murder at mm-hmm. castle so yeah and yeah another castle tie-in for us yes which i think is weird absolutely and then the latest thing he did was on Nine Laid, a father of one of the characters, Grace. Cool. So, yeah, so really good. I thought he played this really well. And what I like about is the Psychor coming here, you get interactions. Like, it's very clear Garibaldi does not like these people mm. and doesn't trust them. Right. He just, instead of having respect as a fellow law officer, he's just like, these guys are trouble. I don't want them on my station. Sinclair is like, okay, this is, you know, I thought that great scene where he says, get out of my head. Yeah. Because Bester is just, he's such a high telepath that he feels like talking is a waste of time. Like, let's just do this. Talia, not to get too serious, right? But they're depending on your social background. Police officers are seen as your friends or someone you don't trust. Right. And so this is very much, she's like, oh, they're a psych corp. This is fine. Right. Well, again, I think somewhat gaslighted by them. Yeah. The thing that she had to go through. Yeah. And I think that's part of it. They plant that thing yes. in them where they, they have to abide by everything. So you might as well make. Yeah, exactly. And, and then they do that very painful scan. So that was, I, th- I thought, really interesting. And then we do see, I thought it was really well done, Susan, Commander of Anwa, because of her background, we have learned how much her mother was this very, very low-key telepath and had to go through this, taking these painful drugs, all because she was like barely maybe a, a P1, right? right? I mean, you could tell she was very, barely 
And so she hates these guys. But I did notice there was this great scene that when after they, Talia was scanned, right? Susan was the first one to hand her a glass of water. And I think that is specifically to show the difference between hating an idea and liking a person. Right. So I thought that was a nice little touch. Yeah. yeah. And that's building on that episode where they clash through the whole episode where right. I feel like maybe they've had a meeting of the minds. And that, I thought that was, I, I love Ivanova as a yeah. character. He's really fleshing. Yeah. Interesting. I, 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 Even I in these so tiny too. little crumbs that they give yeah. us. Yeah. She does. She does a lot with the role. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. This is really, really well done. No braid this week. No, no, I, I did. <laughs> Just the pony. Yeah. Okay, very. I had not noticed that. That's good. I have to. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So we get that. So Ironheart makes his case. Uh, you know, he waits till after they've been scanned. Turns out him and Talia were lovers. I thought that was an interesting premise about when you're a telepath, making love is a whole different experience. I, I thought that was something that we haven't explored too much in TV. And I, I, I like I like that subplot. Mm-hmm. Thoughts, guys? Yeah, I, I liked it too. I uh, One of the things I do appreciate about Babylon 5 is that they don't shy away from the fact that these are adult characters with the usual desires and wants and drives. And the sexuality of these characters is pretty well on display every episode, which is good because it's like when you grow up watching shows in the 50s and 60s, it's like these people don't even have bathrooms. Like, do they ever go to the washroom right. or they sleep in separate beds? It's not the, the case yeah. here. These these feel like from that aspect, socially, they feel like very well-rounded characters. And I I don't know if it was deliberate, but I do like the pairing of this because when you were thinking telepaths and, and uh, all this kind of stuff, it's all very psychic and mental. The emotional part of the equation is not really explored too very often. So here, there's a lot of sexual overtures. The mind scan that they do is basically a rape. Mm-hmm. And, and yes. it's a very uncomfortable scene. And that raises questions that these guys can, these psychor guys can just basically strip a person bare like that. So, and like, like a sexual act, if it's done with consenting partners, it's a, a beautiful thing. But if it's done as a form of violence, then it's a very invasive thing. So I, I, I really appreciated it from that perspective. And the whole idea of two people be able, being able to join to that extent that they become like a, a third being. It's very scary, but at the same time, it's very attractive because we all are basically a voice inside our own head that never really gets seen by anybody else. So that that whole dynamic is very interesting. And I, I really appreciated that. So that that was pretty cool. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the old vulnerable with all your vulnerability, that, that bond, that has to be the best kind of, adult relationship and i mean adult in every not not only are they connected like physically they're connected mentally and also in this third way that that very like you said attractive very attractive primal way your two souls awesome i like that they had way she gets invested in her trying to help try and enlist her to help out and the the psychor is like her touchstone she knows so i think she's very torn and yeah, it's very uncomfortable to watch rape their mind. It is, that is what it, also, I, I just, I really dug the whole, you know, they're, they're not hitting us over the head with, but they're making it very clear how everybody feels about the cycle. Yeah. They go down the line almost and everybody has an opinion, but it's not like they say to the camera, oh, I hate the psych work. Yeah. It's very subtle. And I also loved Garibaldi in the elevator. Yes. <laughs> Curving on Talia and Talia going, uh, no, I yes. don't think so. So that's even another way to, to show how psych. Yeah, she actually talks about that, right? Like says, I'm in the, ho- you, it's like being in a hotel room and you hear them talking next door and, but casual thoughts are easy to block, but strong emotions have a way of slipping through. Sure. Like if they had a fight yeah. next door. Yeah. You'd be able to hear everything. Yes. And if they're just murmuring or whatever and you hear it, you can block yeah. it out. So, yeah, I mean, I got that analogy right away. And yeah. I do believe Michael, Michael Gavardi is very attracted. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I don't know if that's the smartest thing to do is to <laughs> 
staring at her butt in the elevator. I, uh, I feel like he can't help himself. Yeah, that's think, just his personality. Yes. Yeah. So Iron he has mm-hmm. way too much power, and uh, but because of Talia's love for him and, and her past relationship, and I think his pleading to the commander that look, the psychor is more than we think it is. They are. They're starting to pull the strings. They're becoming more powerful. Besides the let him go, Andy does say in an interview, JMS said that they we will not see that character again. He he wanted to use this as an open to see the cycle, but he doesn't like having God like when he says, I'll see you in a million years. It was like to imply a million years. Yeah, yeah. We we won't see this guy again. But I do think he leaves with a lot of questions. And mm-hmm. I love that. No one really got what they wanted. I mean, that whole mm-hmm. discussion of Sinclair talking to Bester and explaining to him, okay, this is what we're going to do. And Bester not happy with it, but doesn't see any way around it. Any thoughts in Lou? Well, it wrapped the episode up neatly, but you have to ask yourself, this guy can read my mind. So if he can do it and he really wants to push this, they could call in Sinclair and another Psychor guy could read his mind and get the the straight story. So I think it might have been a better play to impinge upon Bester's pride that he basically fumbled the ball on this mission. And Mm. you're not going to look good if we we report this, that you you basically let this guy get away. So Mm -hmm. I, I think that would have been a better play. But yeah, but because of what so many questions about these <laughs> psychor guys have come up now, be- because in a way, it seemed like at the beginning of the episode, when Bester came on board and talked to the ticket agent or whatever, the customs guy there, he, yeah. it seemed like he almost manipulated his mind mm-hmm. too, like a Jedi yeah. mind trick just right. beyond reading his mind. So this yeah. isn't the queen bed you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So it's, it, it was a quick way to end the episode, but I, I, I had some trouble with it, so I, I didn't totally buy it, but I'm, I'm not going to knock the episode too much for it because you could go down a rabbit hole and I have, sure. we have to say that, the, or I'm pretty sure this is not the rabbit hole that yeah. Stavinsky wants the Babylon 5 universe to go down. So, but you just can't help but wonder like, what is these guys, was, what are the part are they going to play down the road in the series arc of this show? Because they can do a lot of damage if they decide to, and if they're controlled by somebody that's not the president, like I think the world has one president now uh, in the yes. Babylon five universe. So is that, are they manipulating him or are they, are they, they like not black, black ops, ops, but the, the shadow organization shadow government. Yeah. 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 So, or the deep state, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Yes. So are they the deep state of the Babylon five universe? It sounds like it. So it's, it, it, yeah, there's just a lot of questions here. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Ironheart yeah. actually brought that up, that they're not controlled by the government. They control everything. They want that control over everything. So, yeah, I mean, it's a no-brainer to think that they're installing their own government, their own, everything that has to do the world, that they're going to guide it the way they want to guide it. And that, again, very scary. And we saw how powerful they were in this episode. And again, not hitting us over the head with it, but showing us they are half scary. And again, to compare it to the world now, <laughs> yes. again, <laughs> shadow government, a government trying to undermine another government, and all the manipulation that goes on in the world today. Again, I was like, was he prescient? I mean, did, did JMS have feelings that this is where our society? Yeah, it's history repeats. So I, I, yeah. I think he was drawing on previous iterations of right. this, this type of such scenario. I think that the question that I that's lingering with me right now about the psych chorus is if they were trying to implant a telepathic command into Ironheart's mind to disable him, can they do that to a regular person? Like if I guess they can't, or otherwise, why would they be so bent on making him an assassin, like being able to control a single molecule? Whereas if you could just implant a suggestion in somebody's mind to jump off a ledge or whatever, or shoot yourself in the head, like. Can I guess, can they do that or can't they? But I, again, I'm not clear because they were trying to shut him down with a telepathic command. So can they shut down a regular person with a telepathic command or do they both have to be telepaths for that to work? Uh, more questions about that. So 
two or three lanterns you guys have hit there mm -hmm. that I cannot comment on. <laughs> But as you guys used to tell me on the Scapecast, you're asking the right questions. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys will. Oh, yeah. That word. Awesome. By the way. Yeah. Oh. As a side note. What did I say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I got to go over yeah. everything. Again. Alfred Bester was, is, they named him after the writer. Mm -hmm. The. Demolished and, man. Uh, yeah. The demolished man. And right. he said that, that just pure thought that would be kind of fun to name him after this writer who has written the Demo you know, demolished man he said there's that's all it is it isn't okay you like, don't read anything else you don't it. read anything to it just he thought he had to have a name and he thought that was really nice he did Plus, mention it also i mean bester just on its own yeah the best, best. yes yeah. so it fits in a lot of yeah. different ways. yeah they they said a lot of good things and they on the lurker's guide jms did tell a a very sweet moment walter was coming to join some of the cast members at the table for lunch and as he came to the table they all stood up at attention oh and when he asked why they said in protocol that when junior officers stand when a senior officer comes to the table mm. That's and really that nice. they, because of his long, they think, no, there is a scene autobiography that he talked about how much this role meant to him mm. and that he truly, truly enjoyed it. And it was definitely one of the highlights of his acting life. Cool. So, yeah, I, I was, I was a little worried for him at the beginning because for the first part of the episode, he didn't talk, right? It was either mm -hmm. he was using yeah. mind things or his partner was talking yeah. I thought. Boy, he must feel like he's back on Star Trek again. He's just in the background. Yeah. <laughs> but then he finally started the talk, and I was just going, okay, there we go. And yeah. it was weird to hear him talk without a Russian accent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to make the same point. Yes, it was. Yeah. And so I, I think he actually acted a little bit in that, though, when he wasn't yeah. speaking. You know, you yeah. could almost see what was going on on his face. So I, I don't want that to be the case. I mean, I want him to talk and all that, but it was... Yeah. It was good acting. Yeah, it was. And then I did love one last, because I am such a huge comic book nerd, to mm. hear Susan say, who watches The Watchmen? Mm -hmm. Right? Made me yep. like, yay! You know? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, and, that's a great comment. Yeah, it was yeah. a really great comment on that. Anything else before we move on to another storyline? Anything else that we've missed on our psych? I guess the glove thing is still confusing me with these guys depending maybe on the psychops level they don't need yeah. to have physical contact but i thought with yeah talia she would have taken off her gloves or something like that at some point to yeah establish a better connection but, but and then i guess ironheart so steroided up that he they didn't yeah. need to do that so it's yeah i i'm almost tempted to google this i always look of it as this is something that to make the public feel better, like that, oh, look, they have gloves. They can't touch me casually mm. and read my mind. And also almost a shades of un ugliness in history. The gloves are almost like the badge that they mm. are telepaths. So they mm -hmm. have to wear them so you can spot them. I guess, though, in the winter, it might yeah. be more confusing, but yeah. I think it's maybe for practical concerns too, if they're out and about in public, because people accidentally brush against them and that yeah. they don't want to accidentally yeah. and pick up because she said she's already constantly hearing like background noise as it is. Yeah. So direct physical contact. And again, maybe I'm just focusing on oh. something that's not that relevant for the, for this version of telepaths, but it's just, I'm just so used to physical contact with these things. Yeah. So that's why I, I'm curious about it, but yeah, but the gloves that, Gives them like a gunslinger vibe too, or our special yeah. operative thing. So yep. it's, it's cool. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk to Jakar and Catherine. So Catherine gets invited, Is she's a surveyor. And so it was good to see her back, right? He's talking about budget meetings. And she's so oh, you're going to do great. And the, I do love the fact that she's meeting, they're talking about it. And Jakar comes to her and says, stay away from this planet. This is a bad idea. And because it's Jakar, she doesn't trust him. So Lou, any thoughts? Yeah, it was interesting again, because as Jakar said, nobody here is what they appear to be. So yes, 
again, you're just like, well, okay, so <laughs> how long before we find out who everybody, what they really are is, uh, yeah. is the hook, right? So, and it's such a different perception of this character now from the first episode where I thought this guy, I don't trust him at all. Yeah. And it, now no. it's okay. This guy is, he's, he's got layers to him. So that's great. And hope to see that more with the other characters that again, we're not in this episode, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've established that Jakar is the villain and Londo and, and, and then they're playing with this. Mm-hmm. And, and I do think that is one of the early I iconic lines that let me pass on to you the one thing I've learned about this place. No one here is exactly what they appear. Not Malari, not Delenn, not Sinclair, and not me. And as you go through the series, you will go back, oh, they are playing with us on this. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really well done. I remember watching the first time when he orders that warship, I went, holy crap, he is really wanting to make sure she doesn't explore. What are your thoughts, Karen? I think that Jakar is selfish, so along with other things, obviously. And I don't know that I ever bought into him being like the big bad of, right. of Babylon 5, but not a great guy. And I think what we're seeing is he has ulterior motives, definitely, because otherwise, why would he step in and save her? And is it just that Claire, does he, does he want Sinclair to owe him one? I think not the bad bad guy and and that he's good and bad and also looking out for himself. And I, I thought it was great to see him do something like this, but also admit, you know, I am not what I seem. Trust me. You can't trust me. Right. <laughs> so, and you can't trust anyone else. And he, the the big the head honcho. So you know, getting a bug in her ear is like talk that. I thought that had strong possible. Yeah, I definitely see that. And I remember watching this and going, "Wow, what?" And and he's he is saying, "We're not. I'm not who I you think are. No one is. And why not? Why wouldn't I help you? It right. doesn't cost me anything." And maybe I gained a favor, or maybe I just want to do this because it keeps you guessing. Right. <laughs> but the doesn't matter. The reality or is- Or all of the above. Yeah. And Andreas plays that perfect. He just plays the very- And once again, we end with, and, and I hope you guys don't take this as a bad thing, but it does seem to be the series- has a tendency, one of the Babylon 5 tropes, is they're going to end with an interesting thought that they're Mm going to leave you thinking. And this, that what Jakar says, they are a mystery, and I am both terrified that we have not yet explained everything. Mm -hmm. Whatever they are, Miss Sakar, they walk near Sigma 957. But I love that I am terrified and reassured to know there are still wonders. I, I just love that dialogue. Karen? Yeah, that's how I feel about like deep sea stuff. Yeah. We don't know anything about stuff that goes below us. And that's our planet. Yeah. You know, that's where we live. And we think that we're like the be all end all of everything. And we there's things we still don't know. There's beetles still being discovered every day. Yeah. Species of insects and spiders. and, And so that's, I think it's very cool, but I also am scared. Of yeah. what's down there and why can't we go all the way down and also space yada yada <laughs> <laughs> yeah space doesn't scare me as much right it's just i know there are other there's other life there has to be it's infinite yeah. so why wouldn't there be another planet that evolved it's a, also a no-brainer just a complete no-brainer that you can't think that we're the only beings that live yeah anywhere in the but it's so weird to think that there are things on our planet that we just have absolutely about. Yeah. And as, you, I mean, as everyone either invent or things mutate so that we have epidemics, pandemics. Yeah. And again, that's stuff that hasn't ever existed. We've had coronaviruses for a long time. This is all, and that's terrified, but I'm also thrilled. I would love to see things that love 
thinking about that. And also I think on a, on a more banal level, I liked that, that the two storylines were parallel, even though they didn't seem that way. Yeah. That there is a being that we don't have in both storylines. So I thought it was very cool. I would be happy to have every episode end on this kind of thing that makes you think. Yeah. Uh, I like that personally, that it means you're invested in the show. Like when I read a book, if I think about it the next day or two days down the road, that's a good book to me. Yeah. Whether I hate it or I love it, it got me invested. And I at least understood part of the book that some, some I've connected to something that makes. I really liked that they gave these lines to Jakar because up until this point, he's been a perceptually a pretty one dimensional i don't want to say one dimensional but a, a much narrow d- dimensional sure, type I character agree. so because if you would have asked me who would have spoken these lines three episodes uh, to me this seems much more like a manbari type mm-hmm. of i agree point of view because they seem much more mentally aware or adept at perceiving things whereas jakar and londo are much more base like karen said bacavellian type characters so they're right. very their motivation for- yeah Yes. Yeah. So there, th- th- this is a great expansion of this character, and it's raising a whole bunch of new questions again, which is what you want in a story. So I, I'm really looking forward to exploring more about what who these characters really are. And Car- Karen b- m- made a remark earlier about not perceiving him as the big bad anymore, and I'm wondering if that's the intent of this show or or the end game is that we're looking at all these competing races on the space station as pitted against each other but as the show's arc goes forward we're going to find out that there's actually is a big bad that's not even on the Mm. screen yet or is off totally off stage at this point and everybody on the station is going to pull together to defeat this big bad i i don't know if that's what's going to happen but that's the theory i'm playing with right now so we're getting to know these characters better i too love the fact that no matter how advanced we are becoming with science and technology and whatnot that there's always things that we will never understand or we'll always have questions about and that there's always magic out there and things that Mm -hmm. happen that we can't explain like it's getting harder and harder in this today's connected technology you basically can't blow your nose in public without it being (laughs) recorded on a camera or something like that but still if you get far enough away from civilization and whatnot out on the edges and even in within civilization, there's haunted houses, places of hill house, these kind of places that defy logic and, and reasoning. And this creature that was at this Sigma 957 is an example of that. And that is cool because once we know everything, then that's how people get bored. <laughs> so right. yeah, I, 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 I really like that. Yeah, I love the idea he is scared and in awe, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and I think that's the right tone that this freaks me out. But at the same time, I am thrilled that there is so much more left to learn and comfort. And yeah, I do think, uh, I think it's fun that he is trying to, JMS is trying to set up a world and playing with our thoughts and, and who is what and to flat say no one is who the, you think they are is not only a message to Catherine, but it's a message to us audience. Like, hey, I- I'm telling you right now, I- I'm doing a magic trick, right? Mm-hmm. Like one of the things I love about Penn and Teller is they flat tell you that this is a trick. Mm-hmm. I have no superpowers. This is a trick. And what looks like to be dangerous is not dangerous, but, but you're still amazed. Yes, exactly. That's the thing that you're still amazed. You know, it's, I mean, I watch magician. I mean, I see AG yeah. every once in a while and there's magicians that are doing stuff that I'm like, and yes. then uh, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I know it's just a trick. I want to yeah. know how it's done. But wouldn't it be but cool it, if it was real. <laughs> right, exactly. Wouldn't it be awesome yeah. if they if yeah. they did read minds or they did know how to change things around, you know? And yeah. it, they are so good at it that it, yes. it really makes you marvel. And Penn and Teller are the same way. Yes. They are great magicians, right. fantastic magicians. But I love that they're also on your side. Yes. 
Yeah, they, uh, they like a good magic trick as much as the next person. Like yeah. they do those shows where they try to figure out how these other yeah, magicians fool us, do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, fool us. And uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And they, also we got more of the jump gate for Lou in this episode. Yes, we did. Yeah. yeah. It's and we found <laughs> out that they're trying whatever this the lithium the lithium crystals, whatever the battle the lithium fibers. Crystals. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, hey, we need this, we need this. So that's good. And she mm-hmm. also Gave a clearance code in order to yeah. use the jump gate. So right. mm-hmm. there was yeah. a lot of little things. And I was like, Lou! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I appreciated that. that uh, it seemed to be a little more methodical yeah. and some infrastructure in place for supporting these yeah. things. I'm, I'm curious, though, do Catherine and Sinclair talk shop with each other? Like, is she going to tell him about what Jakar did? And how will we know if she did or not? Is that going to come up in another episode where Sinclair is going to just make an offhand comment that, uh, comment that I owe you one, so I'm going to let this slide because of what you did for Catherine or something like that. I don't know if that's going to happen. or that's. I would hate if they don't reference that or yeah. what happened in this episode down the road. But Or even obliquely. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Reference it. So yeah. I, hope that, I don't know if that happens. I hope it does because that would just, just makes the world seem a little more Real, interrelated yeah. because right now these storylines are always running separately from one another so yes. we never find out that if the other characters learn what the other i'm hoping that's going to be starting to get tied and okay it's good in this episode that talia and ironheart were related before this episode because mm-hmm. it gave us that emotional investment even though we don't know talia that much we she she becomes more of a person she's got a background she's got a backstory and that relationship turned out to be, in my mind, the determining factor of what convinced Sinclair to let Ironheart leave this Babylon 5 space station altogether. And Mm -hmm. of course, he's got the motivation that he doesn't like the Psychops anyhow, so I'm going to help this guy. But Mm yeah, it's still quite a risk because this guy's mutating. Yeah, Bester has a lot of power. And yeah, and also the idea, yeah, have I, have I released a dangerous person into the wild? Yeah. Yeah. And then later, if they come back and hurt someone, I'm responsible for that. Like when you, in political worlds, right, if you end up giving someone a lighter sentence and they go back and hurt someone, that mm-hmm. hurts you. Yep. That's yep. used against you. That's that's a really good point. Yeah. All right. Any final thoughts before the, about the episode? I'm curious about the relationship between Talia and Ironheart in the context of what she said about when they join and they're so you become so tightly wound with the other person that it's like a whole new experience that sounds like a pretty intoxicating experience for me so how would she be able to walk away from that and how strong is that bond is it just in the moment of of the act or of the intimacies that they're sharing together or or does that fundamentally change you in some way or is it just a really super high like a concentrated jolt of hormones endorphins dopamine whatever but it sounds like it would be pretty addictive (laughs) well i've talked about public but we've discussed that often the first time you are intimate with someone like boy that was fun let's do that again let's forget about going to the movies let's forget Mm -hmm. about dinner like our date should be fooling around right and So maybe that you, it's that still enjoy it, find it in its proper place. I don't know. That's mm-hmm. a good I question. I felt like when they saw each other again, that there was that connection. Yeah, but maybe it's when they're together. Yeah. They have that, when they're apart, it yeah. goes to the background. That yeah. I felt like that size, I'm with you. I got to go to you. There was that yeah. definite connection. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, good. I just, yeah, I just wonder how, because she made it sound so fundamentally changing to a person that it seems to me like that yeah. bond would exist even outside. Good it question. But good. Yeah, it's kind of like you know. Again, I'm drawing on Star Trek with the Vulcan mind melt. If you yeah. meld with somebody, that you carry a connection with them For forever. But yeah, forever. The other thing is the why did he give her that gift on the Ooh. telekinesis at the end? right? Yeah. I assume again that they're laying something down here, and is that just the tip of the iceberg for her, or is it something else? Yeah, 
Kira Baldi so better be she careful. Has that ability. <laughs> yeah. She has that ability that they were trying to foster in that yeah. MK Ultra type experiment. Mm -hmm. And if she was retested so, now, would she be at a higher psi level? Right. Yeah. I all good questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you, Karen? Any final thoughts on the episode? Not really. Okay. We talked about everything. <laughs> all right. So five or six episodes in. If I would. We've got feedback from Holly. I want to give us our ratings and everything, but if we don't mind, where are you feeling so far along the journey? And I'll start with you, Karen. So far being into this, what are you thinking about the series? Here, here's the, the way I could sum it up. I want, and that, it says something to me that I was like, okay, I need. Yeah. And I know I can't until after we talk. Right. So it, it's, I sympathize for what you went through on Farscape. Yes. Yeah, because I really wanted to see where things went. And so I'm getting in. Yeah, for what it's worth, I'm doing the same thing. Like I have the same feeling that and season one is up and down. Yeah. So but with like this one was a very good episode. So yeah, I immediately when the the next episode is popping up in the right hand corner, I want to go. Oh, yeah, yeah here you can. Yes, I know. But I'm trying not to. <laughs> so yes. Lou, how about you? Thoughts? Yeah, the same thing. I I want to continue with the story. So because the questions are being raised that are interesting. So you're holding yourself back to do the these podcasts. And then you want to jump into the next episode, which is different than three or four episodes ago where I was like, okay, that was Yeah. I can wait. I yeah. can wait. Yeah. But there was no praying mantis this episode. So I'm sure Karen. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. <laughs> I, I was happy. So yeah. Have we seen the last of him yet? I, I know he doesn't come back after the first season. I right. know if mm. I remember correctly, JMS said he, he they ended up thinking it didn't work, but I, right. so I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. At this point. it didn't yeah. work. Yeah. So it, it's it's the series is progressing in a good way because you're getting into the characters, which makes it easier to forgive some the, the technical limitations of the show. Like Ironheart's final form at the end was very lawnmower man graphics yeah. so it was yeah okay i i can dig it but uh yeah. it was definitely not on a level of like yeah it's the, the world is becoming more layered and textured and there the questions are becoming much more interesting good any favorite i think you said the two i think jakar had all the best lines in the episode yeah. so mm -hmm. agreed I, okay good all right karen braiding i give it an eight and a half i'll give it also eight and a half nuclear vessels <laughs> nice so I'm right there with you guys. I'm going to give it eight and a half juggling babies because of Susan's great line. Nice. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot that. Line. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Yeah, she is. Just, she's awesome. Yes, Luke? One last thing. I do have to say so far, the episode titles are not really working that great for me. Like Mind Wars is like, okay. Yeah. And, and the one before, like in Star Trek, the changeling. Like you totally yeah. get what that episode's about. Mm -hmm. And this is right. basically a changeling episode. Like you could have yeah. called it something else, but Mind Wars is, yeah. I don't know. The, the, the titles in the episodes so far are, are pretty clunky. Yeah, I pretty much ignore them. To be <laughs> yeah. Um, I put a lot into them. <laughs> I mean, I know they exist and everything, and yeah. I see them. Naked Time, Amok Time, yeah. like yeah. I mean, Doomsday Machine. Than you it's get the whole episodes episode right three, there. So episode four. Yes. Yeah. Episode five. But. Yeah, and like uh the H the Titans just name it Max. They just name after a character. Oh. Right. They would Catherine. I liked Parliament of Dreams, but yes, I do agree with you. There are like infection. Like that's not very there's not a lot of poetry in that. No. no. So Born to the Purple was decent, but yeah, I, I think that's a fair get. And mine war on the spot like okay yes we're dealing with telepaths so yep. yeah all right let's see uh, uh karen would you mind reading holly's email i'd be happy to holly says hello everyone man those psychor can certain psychops can certainly pack experiment that the psychor put him through the side story with catherine 957 was okay op storyline glad that jakar was kind enough and yes <laughs> Was kind enough to bail Catherine out from Sigma 957. Why do I get the feeling that this will not be the last we see of Bester? An enjoyable episode. I'll wrap it up here. Holly. Holly. Yeah. I appreciate it. That is very kind. If you want to leave us a message, JKLB5, JKL, 
Jesse Karen Liu about get her feedback. Where can they find you? You can find me on all the social media platforms, Twitter at Lou W. Sitzma or at the Stephen King Podcast. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel on Lou's Reviews where I have all my old Stephen King podcasts are up there. I'm putting up the in tandem with uh, Jesse, the YouTube version of these podcasts. And I also interview writers and I have a, the writers channel playlist that you can check out as well. And I think that's it. Yes, it is. <laughs> nice. And a mostly ever that called my bio. Yes. <laughs> on the Yeah. I am at Buddies on How Many. You can hear me talking Doctor Who. We are coming up on the second of the three Jodie Whittaker Doctor Who specials coming up on this Easter weekend, where the return of the Sea Devils, Charles and I will be talking about that. This week, we are talking about the classic episode, The Sea Devils, with Patrick Trotton as the Doctor. And And before we hit record, I was talking about Karen said that both Stephen King and Bruce Springsteen was trending. At the same time, yeah. Yes, and I mentioned to Lou that there is an article, and and Amanda Lear wrote a great King, and I sent him the link just now, but number five was, is this Stephen King or is this Bruce Springsteen? Your clothes don't fit you anymore. You feel like you're shrinking. Well, I know there's a Stephen King novel called Thinner. Right, <laughs> but the Bruce Springsteen, I don't, I don't know. Do these answers apply? Like, does every one of them? You can find something for both. Yeah, I think uh, yes, that's that the that ends up being the yes. Okay, I I don't know Springsteen songs. Uh, there is the song Philadelphia. Oh where right, he says right. my clothes don't fit me anymore. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. You leave the carnival with your arm around your girl and climb behind the wheel of your car. You feel like nothing could go wrong. <laughs> That's the dead zone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How about this one? Wendy, let me in. <laughs> That's obviously The Shining, but it's also Born to Run. Born, born to Run. Yeah. Yes. I like number two the best. Yes. It's bit, bit by bit. bit. This <laughs> town is killing you. And then the pun, answer pun, is pun. all yes. of them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, it is, it's under McSweeney's Einstein or Stephen King by Amanda Lear. Go enjoy that. Yes, the, the, you will enjoy it. It's about, oh, 25. Oh no, there's up to 30 questions. And she actually, the answer is both. And fast cars will allow you to leave misery behind. You are sorely mistaken. <laughs> So, <laughs> prisoner welcomes oh. his trip to the electric chair. Sometimes a man's better off dead. Are just a couple of these. So check them out. They are very. It is very fun. How like for that one? It's Johnny ninety nine and the Green Mile. Mm. So yeah, check that out. I just right. tweeted a link to it in case anyone wants to know. Good. They can go back to. Cool. This. Sounds perfect. Yes. All I've right. I will share this to all of my Stephen King fans. I'm sure they're yes, friends. I'm they're sure, gonna yes. they're gonna have a blast with this. I, I yeah. just one more. I'm sorry, this sure, is really no, no, late, no, but I'm just hoping that based on what we've seen they're they're doing with the characters up to date, I hope that that applies to Bester as well. That we may not like this guy very much, and either we're gonna hate him even more as the show goes on, or we're gonna find out that like all best villains, he really believes what that what he's doing is right. So that's what I'm hoping happens. Yeah, I think. This is, it is a cliche, but it is true. All villains are the heroes in their own story. Yep. And when that is done well, mm -hmm. makes for better movies, TV, literature, whatever. It is, you always appreciate that. And I think you're right. I mean, uh, nothing against the, uh, the Psych Corp that was with Bester. I mean, I think that is how it was written and they wanted her to do that. But right, but she... He's, I really like how Walter played him. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward to you guys seeing him. He does return a fair amount in the series. Mm. And the Psych Corpse continues to be something very important to the series. So, all right. Thank you, listeners. Thank you. Next week, two weeks, we talk the war prayer. Mm. <laughs> According to IMDb, a pro-Earth group attacks Seek Londo's help. So mm. you guys can now go check that out. Awesome. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Karen. This is so much fun. Mm -hmm. Agreed. That yep. we are getting to do this. I, 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 I love this. 
as always. So if you've never checked out Babylon 5 and you want to join us as a rookie, or if you're an experienced Babylon 5 listener, you want to join us as a veteran, just reach out and then let us know. Mm -hmm. We will talk to you guys soon. Right. Bye. And thank you, Jesse, for your continuing great job as a host. Agreed. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Well, I learned for the best. You two both, you know, inspired me from the beginning. So yeah, great job, guys. See you later. Bye. Care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.